The Baikal seal, or the Nerpa as it's known in Russian, is the only freshwater species of seal in the world, with its entire population being contained within one lake, Lake Baikal in Siberia. The reason that an entire population of seal species can hunt, breed, and live their whole lives in one lake is that Lake Baikal is absolutely massive, having a larger area than the whole of Belgium, being one of the largest lakes in the world, so there is plenty of room. However, what isn't known is how they got there in the first place, as the lake is more than 1500 kilometers and a mountain range away from the nearest sea, while the lake itself is over 450 meters above sea level. So how did they get there? The Baikal seal may be the only freshwater species of seal in the world, but it is not the only seal that is isolated in a landlocked body of water, as the Caspian seal, a close relative of the Baikal seal, is also not able to access any of the other oceans, their whole population being contained within the Caspian Sea. And the way in which both of these seals got to where they are may be from the same reason. There are two main theories that explain how the seals got to their current habitats. One being that they were able to travel across northern Russia due to flooding that was caused by the many glaciers that formed during the Ice Age about 100,000 years ago. And some seals are known to do this, travelling over land into lakes, but only when they are very close to the ocean. So when there was extensive glaciation all over Russia in the Ice Age, it may have been possible for them to pass into the Caspian Sea and Lake Baikal from the north. And this is backed up by DNA evidence because the closest relative of the Caspian seal and the Baikal seals are ringed seals, the most common species of seal found in the Arctic Ocean. The other theory is that about 5 to 10 million years ago in a time known as the Miocene, the Caspian and the Black Sea were combined together into one giant inland ocean called the Paratethys Sea that flooded much further than their modern coastlines. And this ocean may have had some sort of corridor connecting it to the other oceans. When the Paratethys disappeared, the Caspian Seal and the Baikal Seal could have been separated and trapped in their current habitats, allowing them to become two different species over time. And there is evidence that this could have happened because the region around where this old sea would have been has bones from long dead seals. However, the problem is that the seals may not be old enough for this to have happened. Seals evolved from otter-looking animals that were closely related to bears, called Sementaurids and the earliest fossils of these creatures are known from northern Canada around 21 to 24 million years ago. So seals would have been around when this ocean existed, but the Baikal seals were much younger than this. The Baikal seals' closest relatives are the ringed seal and the Caspian seal, with most DNA evidence pointing to them separating about 2 to 3 million years ago. But the Paratethys sea would have long disappeared by this point, so the dates don't quite add up. And so although there are some good ideas to how the seals became landlocked, there are still things that need to be worked out, and so it is still a bit of a mystery. The seal may be one of Lake Baikal's most charming residents, but the lake itself is very unusual too, being a bit of a geological phenomenon. The lake is ancient, being the oldest lake in the world at 25 million years old, which is spectacularly old for a lake that unlike mountains or volcanoes, often aren't actually that old, and can form and then dry up within thousands of years rather than millions. Although at the time of its formation, it probably looked quite different to how it does today. In fact, it was most likely a group of lakes rather than just one, but over time it took shape with the lakes joining up creating the behemoth that exists today. The lake's strange geography has led to the evolution of many unusual species that live alongside the Baikal seal. Because Lake Baikal is landlocked, and has been for a very long time, its ecosystem is very isolated, and so animals have been able to evolve independently from other bodies of water. It is basically the reverse of islands like the Galapagos Islands or Madagascar, that have very unique ecosystems due to being separated from the mainland. This has given Lake Baikal the nickname the Galapagos of Russia, although the Galapagos Islands formed about 3-5 to five million years ago. So Lake Baikal is actually even older, and so its ecosystem has been isolated for even longer. Lake Baikal supports over 1,500 species of animal and over 1,000 species of plants, and at least half of them aren't found anywhere else. However, it isn't just the isolation of the lake that encourages such a large and diverse ecosystem, containing thousands of species. Lake Baikal is one of the largest lakes in the world, but what really sets it apart is how deep the lake is, as it's the deepest lake in the world 
and there are not many other lakes that even come close. Lake Baikal is deeper than the Caspian Sea by a fairly large margin, and almost three times as deep as the deepest lake in the US. Lake Baikal is so deep because it is in a valley formed by the Earth's surface being pulled apart in an area of the world that has a weakened crust. Specifically, Lake Baikal is in between two geological structures known as the Siberian Platform and the North China Plate, which are basically ancient continents that are no longer independent. The reason why this is important is because different creatures have evolved to live at different depths, driving diversity. The ocean is divided into different zones, organised by the amount of light that can penetrate into the sea at different depths, and different creatures are found in the different zones that have evolved depending on the pressures and requirements of living in each zone. For instance, swordfish have incredibly large eyes to help them see deeper in the ocean. However, far below swordfish, so little light cuts through the depth that creatures have had to evolve ways of sensing their environment without eyes, or have to make their own light. Lake Baikal is nowhere near as deep as the deepest parts of the ocean, but it is deep enough to stretch across multiple zones, and this has made some fish that live in Lake Baikal evolve in a similar way to deep sea fish. And the similarities don't stop there, as Lake Baikal even has thermal vents on its lake bed, similar to the deep sea, being the only body of fresh water known to have them in the world. Similar to island ecosystems, the sizes of some of the animals found in the lake are augmented from their relatives in other parts of the world. For instance, Lake Baikal has many species of a type of crustacean called an amphipod that are found both in freshwater and seawater. Amphipods found in other freshwater ecosystems around the world are usually no larger than 2 centimeters or so, and quite often can be a lot smaller, but in Lake Baikal there are species of amphipods that can grow to over 7 centimeters long. Island gigantism and dwarfism are often caused by differences in the availability of food or threat levels from predators in the isolated ecosystems from the main one. And this seems to have had an effect on the Baikal seal as well. DNA evidence shows that the Nerpa are most closely related to ring seals, but an average Baikal seal are about 20 centimeters shorter, most likely due to the lake's isolation. So Lake Baikal is a lake, but it acts like a small ocean, and its strange properties have made it develop a truly unique and fascinating ecosystem. Even if how the Baikal seal or the Nerpa found itself marooned in an incredibly remote part of Siberia may still be a bit of a mystery. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.